even while we were shooting the first one, Kevin was talking about he had an idea for the second and that he had actually conceived of it uh, if, if all went well as a trilogy, which I found fascinating. I mean, uh, the first attraction to this was just a really terrific first script, but uh, the fact that he had the idea for two more and that it all formed a sort of interconnected story was really fascinating to me. Well, it feels good to finish the Scream trilogy, and it feels a little sad too. I mean, it's been almost family, you know, over the over the four years. Um, but it's it feels very very good creatively because uh, I can't think of any other instances of a true trilogy where you have a story that involves the same characters going over the arc of three pictures. So it's been a very interesting uh, sort of directorial job also to watch uh, Nev Campbell and Courtney Cox and David Arquette and all those other characters grow over the span of years. It's quite unique. It used to be in, in old horror films, if teenagers went to a horror film, it would be the, uh, you know, the monster from Uzi Lake or something. It was something made up. But in Scream, they talked about uh, Halloween. They talked about you know, real films that they'd seen and kind of the rules that they had drawn up around those films. So that third wall was broken, you know, and the audience was drawn into a film that was really people, real people talking about real films. And that, I think that awareness that they were in situations that were similar to films that they'd seen opened that whole door to the way that media, films, and television have influenced uh, the last several generations of kids. You know, it's funny, when you make a film, you're kind of like the proud parent of a new baby. You always think they're going to go on to become president, but the fact is many of them end up living in the attic and you don't talk about them. <laughs> but uh, with Scream, you know, right away we knew, we all knew, my producer, myself, uh, knew that it was a great script. So that, that feeling was uh, from the beginning. And then while we were filming it, um, we had the idea, I just had the feeling, filming certain scenes, that this was extraordinary stuff, you know. For instance, the ending scene in Scream 1, uh, you know, when, when the two killers are, you know, talking to each other while they're bleeding to death. I'd re really never seen something that was so wrapped in uh, exquisite irony and sort of shocking uh, newness and so hip and uh, true in a way, you know, very, very true. So you have the, I had the feeling, in fact, I turned to the crew at one point and said, this will never get onto the screen, but if it does, it's going to make a bajillion dollars because it was so different and so shocking. But in the best sense of the word, you know, it was really breaking down barriers and talking about, uh, in a way, violence truly because it was kids that thought they were really cool doing it and ended up being total schmucks, you know, and their lives collapsed around their own shoulders by their own device. So that was, that's quite extraordinary. You know, the making of these three films, another great thing about doing a trilogy uh, is that you get to work with the same actors over and over and as their characters develop and, and mature and uh, find new nuances from the actors and from yourself, you know. And you become very, very close to them. I mean, uh, Marianne and I, uh, part of our theory of making films is to provide a very safe and happy and even silly and fun uh, environment for, for the actors and for the crew. Everybody's given a lot of respect. We get rid of jerks that are obnoxious right away. And we end up with a core group of people that we've worked with a long time or, in the case of young actors, uh, actors and actresses that feel very safe, like they're in a family. And, uh, you know, it's going on with Courtney and David, for instance. Uh, you know, you find yourself three years later at their wedding and you realize that they met on your set and you, you know, you gave fatherly advice to David and you counseled Courtney and um, and they supported you and, you know, when you had doubts about, uh, you know, decisions you were making about your career or whatever, I mean, you, we, you become friends in a really um, quite unique and wonderful way. And that, that holds true for almost all the actors and actresses in the film. We've all stayed in touch. Many of them, of course, have repeated three films now. And uh, it's a great, it's sort of a treasure trove of friendships that has grown out of that, that I think shows in the films, you know, because we all know each other so much. And, 
and um, there's a great exchange of ideas and hey what if we did try this or you know I don't think Dewey would say that or you know this is uh, this is something I think Gail Weather would really get you know pissed off at you know and you, and you you end up with these wonderful sort of idea sessions that uh, you wouldn't with people you didn't know that well. Fresh actors and actresses come in that uh, already have their careers started elsewhere, where they bring uh, kind of new characters into the mix of Harker Posey, of course, uh, a lot of fun, very wacky sensibility. You never quite know what to expect from her uh, at any given moment, and uh, a delivery of a line. She'll constantly improvise and constantly doing something completely different from take to take. So you have all these incredible, funny choices to make. So uh, that's, that's kind of the fun of uh, you know, making the new one, is you get the new characters in that bring their own sort of elements into the stew. Well, I think from screen three you can expect um, more freshness, more surprises, uh, new characters intermingling with old familiar characters in, in shocking and new ways. And you can also uh, fairly expect uh, a resolution to a lot of things, a kind of returning to the whole theme of the entire three movies and some shocking, surprising, and almost explicatory uh, revelations about the whole story and the characters behind it. You know, things that explain what the whole thing meant. Um, things that will be shocks even to the character of, uh, you know, Sidney Prescott and to uh, Dewey Riley and Courtney. So that's kind of the fun of uh, kind of summarizing the whole three stories and then the final revelations of, uh, you know, what was really behind some of the darker secrets of the story. That I think is another kind of refreshing new thing that Kevin brought to this kind of uh, very complicated backstories of, uh, parents and lovers and uh, cheats and dissemblers and all these things that you normally don't get in a you know straight slasher film all those characters in that film that first film could have easily become the cliche versions of uh, other lesser uh, genre films. The Stupid Sheriff, uh, you know, has been in a million films, but uh, the idea of making him a young guy who's kind of handsome and uh, has a real native wit about him and intelligence was the new thing. You know, the, the cliché reporter, the, the, the pushy reporter has been in a million films, but Gail Weathers has a soft side and she's, she worries about what she's doing, you know, and she's, uh, she falls in love with the stupid sheriff, you know, that she never would have fallen in love with, but yet she sees something about him almost redemptive. You know, those, those are nuances that you just don't get in a film that is, uh, you know, just doing the stock characters. So that, that's, to me, it's always been one of the most interesting things to do in the genre is to start with situations that could be cliche or characters that could be cliche and then make it human because it always catches everybody off guard and, and makes it much more powerful.